Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and a couple of weeks ago I put out a video showing you how to make paper mache smooth after it was dry. What you can put on it, what you can do to make paper mache smoother if it didn't come out quite the way you wanted it to. In this video I want to show you how to make the paper mache smoother while you're actually applying it to your armature. Now I'm working on a cow mask right now. Um, it's got the, that's why it's got holes right here so you can actually see out. No matter what you're making with your paper mache strips and paste, you're probably going to put it on something that has curves, it has shapes, it has dips and bumps, and you want your paper mache to go on over all of those shapes and, and capture them so that it looks the way you really expected it to when it's all done. And if you can get it on nice and smooth, then you won't have to go to nearly as much trouble to get it ready to paint it when the paper mache is dry. And there's just a couple of tricks to pay attention to. It's really easy, it's really fast, so let me go ahead and show you how to do that. The first thing you want to do is use newspaper because it's a really soft paper and it's really easy to um, get it to mold itself to different shapes. It's still going to be a little bit of a challenge but it'll work a lot better than a harder paper would be. You also want to tear it. You'll see that this is torn on all four sides. I go ahead and tear off a long strip and then cut it up or, or chop it up into smaller pieces. And you can also make even smaller ones just doing this. It will tear in one direction really straight and in the other direction it goes really crooked and you'll figure out which one that is as soon as you start tearing it so don't worry about that part. You do need some small pieces if you're going to do real detailed areas or areas that have a lot of changes in the direction of the shapes. So I'm going to put those right there. The next thing that I've discovered and I, maybe this is just my imagination, but to me, it's easier to get a nice smooth surface if you use the raw flour and water paste. It, you can find the directions for that out on my website in the art library, or you can download the free five best recipes for paper mache. You can find that, um, there's a link to that on the sidebar of my of my website. I'll also put a link to that down below so that you can get that if you want to. It, it makes it a lot easier to make this really smooth if you use the hottest water that comes from your tap. Not boiling water, but just really hot water. Mix it up really well with a whisk and, and then it doesn't um, separate quite so much and it leaves a smoother surface than it does if you start with cold water. Now the first thing I need to do is, is um, do a fairly big piece, but I'm going to put it over this area on the cow that has a lot of different changes in the the shapes. It's got seams right here from the pattern, and so it's, it's going to not want to lay down flat. Some areas it does want to lay down flat, and in some areas it doesn't, so I'm just going to help it out a little bit by making a tear right there, just very easy. Smooth it down. Make another tear. Now this is the first one that I put on, so my fingers are actually clean, oddly enough. That doesn't happen very often. So I'm going to go ahead and stick them right there. I'm putting this paste on top because you need really, really wet paper because that's what makes it mold itself to the shapes underneath. Now some of these shapes on here, I don't actually want to show up on my finished piece. Like right here, I didn't press my tape down quite enough and it's got a ridge right here, two of them actually. But I'm going to go ahead and cover that up with another piece. See, I tore that again just so that it shapes itself. If it doesn't, I'm going to tear it again. Do it as often as you need to and then push it down really, really hard. You don't want any uh, air bubbles under there 
and you don't want any globs of paste under there. You want it to be as smooth as possible and you need to really push on it sometimes in order to get that to happen. And I'm going to show you another trick here in just a second. Put one more here because there was a, a couple more um, ridges from the tape. I'm just covering them up, making it nice and smooth. Now I can kind of feel that there's a little bit too much paste under there. I'm going to use my knife here. I'm just pressing it down really hard. Well, not really hard. You know, reasonably hard. This is making sure that there aren't any air bubbles under there. If there are air bubbles, even though you don't see them right now, when it dries, that little area is going to kind of puff up on the dried paper mache and you won't be able to sand it out or anything because it's just going to be a piece of paper that's sitting over air. You'll actually have to uh, use your knife, cut it out, replace that piece, and, and you really don't want to have to do that. So this really helps. Now let's try something that's a little harder, and that's that eye. I'm just pushing it into that uh, dip right here around the eye. Just keep doing that all the way around. I'm going to go back with my knife again. Push it up there into that dip because I, I want a, a really strong line right there when I'm painting it. This is one that's already dried. I did exactly the same thing on this one. And it's nice and smooth because I used that knife. Um, and you can see the, the dip really easily. So once this is painted, this is going to work really well. And now I'm going to do the same thing um, with that horn. Just got a nice, wet, skinny piece of paper. And I'm not going to force it into any particular shape. I'm going to, I want to go around this horn and I'm going to let it go around in its own direction. It doesn't want to go spiraling up, which would be really nice, but in this particular spot it didn't want to. So I'm going to let it do what it wants to rather than uh, what would be most efficient for me. <laughs> um, just keep doing that. It's coming back over the old one. That's okay. I'm pressing it down really firmly to make sure there's no bubbles in there. Smoothing it off. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is the horn that I did yesterday and it's dry. And I just wanted to show you what you can do if you weren't paying attention and you maybe you wrapped your horn or, or whatever part of your sculpture a little bit too quickly. Now it's a little bit bumpy. Now what you can do, of course, is you can go ahead and um, use some of those techniques that I showed you in that other video on how to smooth off your paper mache. Or you can just go ahead and do it over um, if you have time. Just go ahead and put a few more pieces of paper mache over the area that's just a little bit too bumpy. I'm going to do that right here. I want my horn to be nice and round and as smooth as possible. So, And this little area was uh, just a little bumpier than I wanted it to be. So I'm just putting on a couple more. Now this is something that I should have done when I was putting it on there the first time but for some reason I didn't and it's no big deal. Just go ahead and give it another few pieces and the new paper, you know, it has a depth, it has, uh, it's not very thick but a little bit thick and so it's going to cover over some of those bumps and ridges and make it a lot smoother. Now if you're working on a pattern like this so that you have uh, some uh, ridges just from the natural way that the pattern is put together. Uh, I don't usually worry about it on the back. This is this is a helmet style mask and it just happens to have ridges instead of being perfectly round. Uh, I did that when I was building the pattern so that I wouldn't have to have so many different little pieces. Uh, but if you don't want this flat 
and then flat again. You want it to be just a little bit more rounded. What you can do is put your first pieces of paper mache. Let me get them here. Nice big wide ones because that's a big flat space. Put them in the middle of those two ridges just to fill up that space a little bit. Get rid of your extra. I put on way too much paste right here. I'm just pulling it off, putting it back in the bowl. I'm going to use another one to fill in the space on the other side of the ridge. And then just put pieces over the ridge and it smooths it off a lot nicer. Uh, you can continue doing this until you get a perfectly round shape. I am not that concerned about it because this is the back and nobody was really going to see it because I'm going to put my mask up on the wall. So I'm not too worried about it. But this is one way that you can get nice rounded shapes. So now all my paper mache is on. I let it dry and I hit it really, really lightly with some sandpaper. I'm going to hold it up here so that you can see it. It's quite smooth, and that's really all I'm going to do because um, I, I think it's, it's smooth enough already without doing any of the things that I recommended doing on that other video. Again, I'm going to put a link to that other video down below in, you know, in the description below the video, so you can go ahead and click on that if you'd like to see uh, some of the options that you have for making paper strips and paste a little bit smoother if you don't like the way it came out. And I will also let you know as soon as the cow pattern is done, if you uh, think you'd like to have a cow mask or a, a sculpture to go in your wall, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll let you know as soon as it's finished. Uh, I've got another week to go probably just um, putting the instructions together and, and getting her painted. So that's going to be a while. But in the meantime, go make something <laughs> and then come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.